here tonight? How did it feel? Oh, you know, it's, uh, it was a special, you know, because the uh, last time I was here when we won the Calder Cup. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, I got, uh, you know, a lot of memories here, but also I have a lot of friends here too. So uh, I was just happy to be here, you know, I got the chance to play finally, you know, but uh, with the Red Wings, I didn't play that much. So I'm just glad to play hockey, you know, enjoy, enjoy, the, enjoy the time here and, uh, you know, help the team win as many games. How was your endurance, stamina? Uh, I was okay. I was okay. I was, uh, you know, um, didn't play too long, so I was, uh, was kind of a little bit. I feel like I was struggling in the end, but uh, you know, I guess uh, just gotta get uh, into the game shape and you know, and play. Uh, when you play more, you know, you feel better about yourself and you got some uh, a little bit more confidence. But uh, the guys helped me, and my line was really good. You know, I play with uh, with uh, Z and Meek, so I, I really enjoy playing with them. You know, I played with uh, Meek uh, a couple games in the, in Detroit, so you know, I think he's a really good player. You know, so uh, I'm just. Uh, Enjoying my time here. Nice to get a couple of assists too. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I, I didn't. When I was going to the ring today for the game, I, I didn't even think about like getting any points. I just said to myself, I just want to play good. You know, enjoy the time. You know, finally get to play more minutes than what I did up there. And you know, uh, the two assists, you know, it's a plus. But uh, also, congrats, me on that uh, hat trick too. What do you have to do to improve? Flash, you talked about you, you have your offensive skills, but beyond that, what should we put down? I'm just playing better D zone, um, getting on the puck quicker and harder, using my body a little more. Um, you know, keep working on my gaps and landing plays earlier. And really, just the D zone, um, being stronger down there, and then you know that'll create the offense. We had a hat trick. Uh, maybe two seasons ago, last year, two seasons ago. Yeah. How did that last one play out? You know, it's like at the end of the game and opportunity arose. Yeah, it was an uh, incredible effort by Zadina there to, to make a diving play and get it over to, uh, to Ferky. And then I, I still got to talk to Ferky. I don't know how he saw me or knew I was there or anything, but uh, that was a heck of a pass. So it was easy on my part just to put it in the empty net. But yeah, that was fun. Did, does it help you guys considering last time you get shut out by them? Is this, you know, I mean, with, you have to play them again tomorrow. Yeah, of course. We wanted to play them tough. Um, like you mentioned, six periods in a row playing against them. So um, every time we can finish a check, every time we can do, do those those little things correctly, um, that just kind of compounds uh, over the course of this uh, mini two game series. How did that line work you know, with you and the team? I think it worked well. I think uh, we had some pretty good chemistry going. We were able to find each other, and um, both those guys can shoot. So I was uh, doing what I could to. Uh, Doing what I could to uh, get them get them the puck and uh, vice versa, so it, it seemed to work well. Tell me your impressions of her. Um, we got a chance to play together a little bit uh, earlier in the season, so um, there's a little bit of continued chemistry there. So um, he's fun to play with. He's he's uh, he's really fun to play with, and like I mentioned, he's uh, definitely a shooter. That's a strong point of his game. Um, but he does all the little things correctly, um, and that makes him easy to play with, uh, easy to read, uh, and things like that. For this team, what do you mean for the power play? It's huge. You know, now we've got we've got two uh, really really heavy shots um, on both the flanks. Um, you know, we'll see what happens here if anything changes. But as of right now, we got two heavy shots on the on the flanks, um, and so teams are going to have to respect that. And then uh, you know, something might open up through the middle, and uh, so it really really makes it a pretty dynamic power play. Yeah, no, I thought I thought we had a heck of a first period. I thought we did a lot of little things that led to our success. And I think in the second period. We got away from it a little bit more, and uh, I think Jared Curl played very well for the first period. We had, I don't even want to guess how many great A scoring chances we had, but he did a good job of keeping them in the game. And you know, it wasn't—I don't think at the end of the day it wasn't the score wasn't indicative of how close it was. We had some good chances for sure, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, they they did a good job of uh, and Rosie did a good job of keeping pucks out, and keeping them in the game. Did you, did you risk any kind of distraction in that because? Coro's there, they have tribute to him and all the other. No, you know, I, I think that's a nice thing for the organization to do. For a mm -hmm. guy that's been here for so long, he did a lot of good things uh, for this organization, both as a hockey player and in the community in Grand Rapids. So I think that you know, speaks to his volume, you know, volumes about his character. Uh, but at the same time, we're not playing him, we're playing their team. So uh, you know, just another good player in this league that uh, we've had to, we had to deal with tonight. Right. Um, your thoughts on Dennis Trollowski and how he played for uh, Again, Dennis had played a little bit, so uh, again, his biggest attribute is one of his
biggest perceived deficiencies where he's very, very composed and very patient with making decisions. And I think at times he just has to have a little bit more urgency to his game. But I thought for his first game down here, uh, with everything uh, recently he's been through, being sent down for the first time and coming to a new city and everything, new coach, new locker room, and different group of guys, I thought he settled in just fine. Yeah. How do you work with him when you have an offensive-minded defenseman who's down here because so he can work on his defensive skills? You work at it. <laughs> you know, you just you keep hammering home principles, you keep hammering home habits, and then those, you know, it just becomes by nature at that point. So, uh, again, if we're at a point in our season where we don't have a lot of practices per se right now, but we will, and that's our job down here as a developmental league is to get those guys they're, again, their perceived deficiencies, and he knows that he's got to be better defensively. Uh, and it's our job to make sure that he's, you know, he's learning and he's growing as a player. Yeah, he's on the point of the, the power play too. Is that, is that what you like with him and with Fur? Both of those guys can be part of the power well, play. Well, Dennis has run a power play before. And he's had success on the power play before, and you know what? Uh, he's going to have success down here, hopefully, and take that experience. And if and when he's afforded the opportunity back in the trade, he'll continue that as well. Without uh, you know sacrificing his defensive side of his game. Yeah. So you like pairing with Mac Roth? Yes. Certainly, two of the biggest defensemen I've seen. Pair yeah. here. Well, you know, again, we, we put Mac with him tonight because Mac is a little bit more defensive minded, and uh, he you know, he's very capable of helping defensively. So, again, as it, when the kid gets sent down the first game, sometimes it's a little bit hairy, but I thought for the most part uh, we didn't give up a ton. I thought the two of them were fine tonight. You like that pairing? You want to stick with it? Yeah. Well, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll look at the tape, and sometimes, you know, sometimes they make the right call, sometimes they don't. So I might be way off, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, we'll make a decision after tonight as to whether they'll stay together. We'll maybe mix up a pairing or two. But I thought for the most part, you know, we, we had a pretty solid game tonight. Yeah. I know this side you had, you know, a nice pairing between the three, some with Fur. Sedina, yeah, no, I thought that line played pretty well tonight. Uh, and again, no different than the, the our group in, in whole got away from a few things in the second period. But, uh, you know, we were talking as a staff before the game, and I think we were interested to see how Megan and Furk would play together because when Furk had success down here last time he was here, he played with uh, Nosey, Thomas Nosek. Mm -hmm. Similar type of player between Megan and Nosek and, you know, responsible two-way guy. And uh, I think the three of them played pretty well tonight together. Yeah, individually for Ferk, what do you think of him? Again, you know, he hadn't played in a long time. He's played two games in probably last month, and in those two or three games that he's played, is you know he hasn't played a lot. So I talked to Marty and said he told him that he's like, he's got to keep me posted. His legs are hurting because he's going to play a little bit more down here. And he's excited to play. And Marty's got a great attitude. He's got a high work ethic, and I think that. Uh, you know, he's going to be a good, good addition for the squad, down here. And how about for the power play? Well, again, yeah, he's got a weapon, but you know, teams are teams are well aware of that down here. So teams are going to be cognizant of that, and maybe they'll they'll try and take that away a little bit. So again, hopefully they'll overcommit on that, which will, again maybe open up another option. Yeah, when you have someone with Ferk, you also have running. You have another veteran that gives you eight. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the problem. How do you deal with that part of it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a very good question. No, you know what? Uh, our guys, our, our older guys, our vets and our vet exempts, uh, I think they're good character guys, they're good people. I think that they realize that they're part of a winning culture here. Whether they're in the lineup tonight, whether they're out of the lineup tomorrow, I think that they all realize that they've helped build us and get us to where we are, and we're going to continue to need that depth. And, uh, you know, you look at tonight, we didn't have Lashoff, one of our best defense, and we didn't have our captain, Matt Ford, two huge pieces for us, and we managed to play a pretty good game. So, uh, again, those are decisions, and they're tough decisions, but at the end of the day, it, it's a headache, but it's not a bad problem to have when you have a lot of good old character players. Yeah, so you evaluate game by game based on who you're playing and, and the lineups? Well, and, at this point of the year, we, we've got 25 games left, and you know, we had a little bit of a kind of pseudo rotation, but you know, moving forward, it's going to be based on current play, complete body of work. You know, everyone's going to have an off game every now and then. The last thing we want to do is have our vets clutching their sticks and, and worried about making mistakes for fear that they'll be out of the lineup. So uh, I think you have to take into account uh, total body of work, uh, schedule. You know, we're playing three games in four nights. Maybe someone's got a little nagging things. You give them a rest. And again, who we're playing. If we're playing a real physical tough team or a fast small team, I mean, little things like that will, will pay into our uh, help us make our decisions as well.